Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. I'm here with Jeff. We're wanting to talk about electrical on a so simple level that everyone here gets it. What we're going to cover first is wire sizes and gauges. Then we're going to talk about how to strip and crimp wiring. And Jim, I'm going to turn this over to you and I'm going to get behind the camera and uh, try and zoom in and let people see this. That sounds great. Okay. One of the reasons to uh, strip and crimp, this is an inline fuse holder. When you wire things up, never wire an inverter directly to your battery without a switch and a fuse. You, you seriously need them. You can get into a lot of trouble in your rig not fusing your inverter. You want to be able to shut it off so that you can work on things. So it's just as simple as stripping off an end. We're going to strip off an end here. And we should say these are just cheap tools you can buy at Walmart for three bucks. Oh yeah, but as you can see, it actually comes with one of the crimp tools in it. All right. of the, all of the connectors listed here, some zip ties. It, it you know, it makes it real quick and easy. Let's put a lug on here. Here we go. So again, the wire comes just slightly out the end here. I'm going to give this a couple of squeezes. That end would go to your battery. Now I'm going to use this end. This is a, a splicing So I'm going to stick that end in there, and let's see, number 10, let's say I'm going to hook it to this wire, put that in in there. Uh, th this is just a small blade fuse, but the proper size and amps size will slide in here. You close it up; it's nice and sealed. You're now your load, your wire is now protected. And if you draw too much power, the fuse blows. Right, it overheats, or you always want to keep a secondary, at least one extra fuse. But if your fuse blows, the first thing is to wonder why it blew. Um, something's wrong it, it's some you know the fuses don't get old and wore out and blow for no reason you, you might have shorted out something correct the problem put a new fuse in it and you're off there's a variety of fuses you can use this is another type of inline fuse this is called a blade fuse holder this whole blade comes out again find out why if you blew a 150 amp fuse find out why first Correct the problem, put a new fuse in. These are MRBF terminal fuse blocks made by Blue Sea. They're my particular favorite way of going. Take this off here. This end goes on the, your battery terminal. So, we we'll use this as a battery terminal. This end would go here on the terminal. Then the fuse. That little that little thing you just put on is the actual fuse. This is the actual fuse. It's called a block fuse. Then your lug. Then we're going to put these back on. It's over there. Like that. There you are. You you just fused uh, 
that wire. And it took up very little space and it was it, it directly connected to the battery, which is the safest way you can fuse. That's right. Um, very short distance. I believe someone just said that uh, you're supposed to be within seven inches of the battery. The closer you are to the battery to fuse, the better off you are. Uh, tell us again the name of that. We'll put a link in down in the description. This is an MRBF fuse block by Blue C. And uh, we should give uh, Blue C's a plug. And the fuse I just put in there is a 40 amp terminal fuse. I use a, a variety of sizes. I, I use, I have one for my big inverter that's 200 amps. My 60 amp controller, of course, has a 60 amp in it. Um, it, it it's just an easy way to go. They take up very little room. Uh, you, you, you don't have to screw it to the wall like you do this. You don't have to have the fuse dangling around like on this. It's just connected to your battery and it just sits there. Clean and simple. Clean and simple. And, and if you, you want to change it out, it's just as fast to take it apart. When you're drilling through a wall, you, you don't just want to stick your wire through the wall. Uh, the movement of your vehicle is, is going to cause the insulation to rub off. There's a good chance that you can short out your wire. Several installs I did this year were exactly like that. Things weren't working, and I, and I found where the wire was rubbing, uh, the insulation came off, it shorted out. Uh, one lady lost a, a really nice $300 charge controller. This is called a rubber grommet. Drill out the proper size hole for the grommet, put that in there, run your wire through it. Now this wire is protected by this rubber. The, the wall on the outside isn't going to tear into the insulation of the wire at all. So you drill your hole just big enough for the grommet, and then the grommet protects the wire. That's right. And, and, it, and it's really important, too. Um, you don't, it's when you start cutting corners that you, you're bringing risk on yourself, and that's a corner. I saw a lot of corners cut, and I don't know that the people were cutting corners. Some of them just didn't understand what they were doing and, and tried to self-install, which is great. But take the time to figure out how to do it properly because, you know, if, if you're in a van or an RV, this is your home. Don't burn down your home. With you in it. With you in it. Spend the money to do it right. Spend the time to learn it right. So thanks, Jim, so much for sharing your uh, knowledge and experience with us again. It just, you know, it's just so good to have someone that really knows what he's talking about. Well, I'm, I'm not an expert. An expert means all-knowing, and I'm certainly not all-knowing, but... I've had to learn certain things to be able to use my own equipment out here, and I'm happy to pass that along. As long as we're helping your, your viewers out, that's that's what the most important part. Right, very very much so. So there you have it. I hope you have, this helped you. If it did, like us on uh, YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.